Welcome to the Outrun Show. Today we are talking about what of parkour should you know? Do you guys, do you know, listeners? Should everyone do you know? know? Should everyone should know? Everyone. Yeah, and by the should, we mean the must. We mean the you have to know these things or you're just not being completely human or for lack of a better term, you probably have some sort of like uh, shortcoming with your movement if you don't know these things or what, what are the risks involved? Um, and to parlay on that, actually, we'll be talking about how many um, chicken nuggets you can eat in 30 seconds. Was that the... Yeah, quick answer. Go. <laughs> quick answer. Uh, 24. I know this. 24. 30 seconds? Well, not 30 in 30 seconds. seconds. One sitting? Oh does, one, does one sitting that's count? one every, like, 1.2 <laughs> seconds. Not, that's in, that's literally all not in 30 seconds. Okay, in one sitting. How about just one sitting? In one, one sitting. I don't, I and think it's a choking hazard that, to I, encourage the chicken nuggets per 30 seconds. but uh, Probably, but also, like, Justin's awful at sitting still, so I like, tried he would fail at that. Roommate. We ordered, like, the 100 chicken nuggets, and I think we ate, like, five. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, 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 I'll top that off in a second. <laughs> but then, actually, a surprise topic. Uh, J- Justin hasn't heard about this, but this pins back to how uh, what we should know about parkour. Uh, Jesse and I uh, saved an old lady for who fell in the river. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, just a couple what? days ago. Yeah, yeah. you know, well, you guys didn't tell me right Sunday. away. Be strong, be useful. Yeah. All right. All that action and <laughs> survival on this episode of the Outrun Show. I am Travis. I'm Justin. I'm Jesse. And now you know the slightly different sounding yep. white guy voices. It's the, <laughs> game, the game to win if you can actually <laughs> figure out who is who. Um, all right. So let's talk about our uh, chicken nugget situation. we got to wrap that up real quick. And then we're going to go into our um, survival story. I'll tell you the survival story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't do chicken nuggets. All I think of is baby chicks shredded together and mushed. And when I eat one, that's all I imagine. That's why I can't do boneless chicken wings. Just they're but not if, real, guys. What if, but what if it's really just chicken breasts just grounded together? They're not little baby chicks. Okay, <laughs> maybe the McDonald's ones. I don't know. Right. They grind up all the baby chicks before they grow up when they when no, they pro- when they're proven no. to be inferior feeder chicken. Yeah, that's, I think that's I actually what happens. But Maybe you, if they're in the shape of dinosaurs, I can do it. Because <laughs> it makes it cute? <laughs> Dino chickies? No, but like, I know I'm like, your DNA you is, is somewhere close to a dinosaur, so... Oh, it's very that's, true. Uh, that's, right? that's the, the chickens exist now in a false reality. reality yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mockery of their ancestry. It's, it's like a return to the source, but yes. a false reality of their source. It's like a fraction of the true identity... Is present in the false reality, right? Yeah. That meme, though. I thought that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's hilarious. So imagine you're a pterodactyl. A pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Just. <laughs> um, that sounds like, yeah, that could be like an avatar animal. Tera- the pterodactyl. Tera- tactical. <laughs> the pterodactyl. He's got like, yeah. <laughs> he's got like, he's like guns gun. on him. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine you're the pterodactyl. And you've got your machine guns, and you're just roaming freaking North America with like a 30 foot wingspan. And then you're like, hey, pterodactyl, if you could communicate with them. Do you want to know what you look like <laughs> tens, of millions of hours in the fu- in the, tens of millions of hours in the future? You'd be like, sure, I am a glorious beast. And and you're like, here. And you show him the chicken nugget in the shape of the pterodactyl. He's like, what? They made me into that? And you're like, yeah. But actually, this is what you looked like before that. And then you see some dopey looking hey, hey, chicken. And you're like, wow, how they have fallen from their grace. So the ultimate, you know, episode, just goes to you know, show evolution's not kind to everybody. No, not the just kind of humans, not to everybody else. In this moment, yeah, for in now. this moment, that's <laughs> true. In this, in this short window of time, I don't want to be looking in the future raw, arguing about AI and stuff like that, and then it's like, oh, you want to see? Cool. Well, look, you're a chicken nugget. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. Uh, the grease that but helps move our gears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, it's expensive grease. I just don't buy into those. Anyway, uh, the answer for me was I try, I went and bought the 24, like, Jim's Wings, you know, that joint um, by CSU, the wing, uh, wing uh, place. And I, uh, I, when I was trying to do a mass game, this was during the time of GoMad, actually. So I was, did a, so actually, I did, this is impressive, gallon of milk that day plus 24 Ooh, you really tried. hot wings. You really gave it <laughs> Call it. 
Yep. I ate 24 and about like a dozen in, you're just thinking about how much bird leg you're eating and it gets, it gets the, it gets a little rough with the yeah. skin. It's, yeah, I'm not a vegan, but man, that, <laughs> that sure pushed you closer. That and Food Inc., those two moments were definitely moments where I challenged my ability to eat meat. <laughs> uh, cool. So, um, that wasn't a chicken nugget, so I guess it technically doesn't count. But were they just they were regular. They were the bone wings. wings. Yeah, they were bone uh, wings. Yeah. yeah, those technically don't count because you can't just. No, you can't like like the hot dog eating championship. Just, just douse them with water and, and then start eating with a spoon because that's yeah. how you could get through a lot more that way too. So Gross. Yeah. Sorry. Food eating contests are. Um, uh-uh. Oftentimes, I listen to podcasts while I'm eating lunch, so I'm sorry, you guys, whoever's <laughs> listening to this, and they're just sitting there like staring like gauntly at their. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets in this <laughs> moment. You don't need that stuff anyway. It's okay. For, for uh, I, I'm a hundred percent certain that I've pounded like a fifty pack of like chicken oh, nuggets from no Chick Fil A. Oh, from Chick Fil A. Oh, I bet I could. That's rough. A hundred percent have. I don't think I've had their chicken nuggets before. What? They're pretty tasty. They're smaller. They're not as big, but they're still fifty. You've never had Chick Fil A chicken nuggets. Yeah. Maybe a long time. I haven't had Chick Fil A. Oh, that's right. Because you're off. Well, you know they're meat. They, they aren't like the McDonald's ones. Like they look like chicken breast with a little bit of breading. That's why I kind of like them. And mm. sorry, mm. it's a lot about chicken. So, and we chicken. are not well, sponsored by strips. anyone who deals with chicken. <laughs> no, we call it chicken yard bird. Yep, it's a yard bird because it's the lesser of all the meats. Yep, and it's convenient it's and, bird. and, bird. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at the imagery and you're just like yard bird, and it's kind of scampering around eating trash and stuff. Anyway. All right, so sorry, you guys, we've digressed way too far into that. Let's talk about saving a life. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so we were uh, play we the, were play the fray song while this is going on. Just in yeah, then the background <laughs> just is real low, just not so that we don't get the takedown notice, but just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, find the Muzak version. Um, so we were jamming on our b boy scales, and then we went to do a post um, session dip in the river because that's the river's actually clean here in Colorado in Fort Collins and after training and getting out like hot sweaty and just like working those joints it's very refreshing to hop in a cold river mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we uh we went down to the river and we're just hanging out like in my like Pokemon boxer briefs and the uh, sitting on the rocks and you just hear this crash and splash and you look over and this this poor woman was falling down the side of the riverbank and like yeah did some straight so, like yeah so if you could visualize it like the what? the rivers in Colorado aren't like soft there's, and it's the sand. grade they're, is not just like stroll up they're, through they're, it. they're rocks right like it's like a and rocky dirt. and yeah and, and sticks dirt, and trees and right spiders and, like, and snakes it's such a dry hum- you know it's such a dry atmosphere here that trees aren't like soft and lush they're like mm-hmm. They're kind of like desert trees, and so the the trail that she's walking on by the by the river is probably up, you know, ten feet from the river bed. But yeah. she's down on like a little like trail that branches off that comes like halfway down. So she's probably five, maybe six feet above the actual river water line. Water line, line yeah. But it's a steep drop. Sheer grade. I mean, it's just yeah. the only thing that's in there is like rock. Um, like I said, like. Yeah, snake spiders and like a, uh, like branches like sticking up. Like impalement would have totally been a thing. So <laughs> um, she she's walking her dog or something like that. She falls now. She's she's a little overweight. Like she, I'm I'm not trying. To, I'm just trying to paint a narrative. I mean, you know, if she your family's listening like like ex- acceptably. But it's not. She's not average. a small person. Average person. Yeah, average. Like, and she must have been mid sixties, easy, maybe yeah. late, and just like tumbled and I caught the glimpse of it out of my peripheral vision and thought that it was so weird because she was she she basically fell on her neck at the bottom of the fall and then just like boom is in the water and then is sort of like half coming back out so we could tell that something was going on so we just jumped in the the middle of the river and like swam over there's a bit of a current there because it's the pooter and rivers in Colorado move very fast even though they look shallow and easy there the pull on the water is very fast so we got over to her, and um, she was kind of dis like oriented, but insisted she's fine. Now, anybody listening, uh, at some point, and that isn't even an age thing, things happen to people, and adrenaline kicks in, or embarrassment kicks in, and this is where I, I'm pretty sure that 
we're, our, our existence as, as consciousness is mostly a composite because people seem to be completely disassociated with what they can do. Like, they will be like, oh, I'm fine. And they're bleeding. <laughs> and she yeah. was just concerned about finding her hearing aid. Yeah. And so, like... Well, and there was, there was one other couple. So it was the two of us and then, you know, our b-boy coach, Izzy. We were all, like, sitting on the rocks when it happened. And there was one other couple like maybe 20 feet from us with the same viewing angle of that. And the gal was insistent. I was talking with Travis and it was behind me the, where she fell, but she was insistent that she hit her head on the, on this like tree root that was sticking out from the side of the hill that like kind of branches out and goes into the river. And the lady fell and she's like, no, she hit her head on her that neck. root. I saw that. I yeah. saw the roll out of it, but I didn't see the actual like impact. So the, uh, so so we noticed that Man. that was a problem, <laughs> and so we so we jumped over and uh, and swam over, and then for us like it was it was no thing like it's just like Jesse just hopped up, and then I just like overhead pressed her <laughs> to up this up back up the grade on yeah. the hill, and Jesse pulled little push pull, little like uh, method natural there, like be strong be useful, and it wasn't anything for us, and also we had the we had the knowledge that people tend to overestimate and be too confident in their recovery after an accident so she's standing then again on the same edge she just fell off of insistent that she's fine and i'm just adamant that she go to flat land and he's hearing her husband or just maybe there's like oh it's, it's okay like he tried to come down too and i was like sir just go please go back up like he climbed down a bit <laughs> Who does like, only two of you guys in the water here and so they got they got back up, and she was most worried that her hearing aid was gone. But she's still bleeding out of her arm and stuff. Yeah, she, like, has this big old puncture in her forearm from where she hit, like, a root or something. And it's just, like... Yeah. And I was like, uh... You need that checked out. You want to go, like, <laughs> make clean that? And, you know, of course, we're not going to... We're not doctors, so we're not going to tell anybody, like, this is what you need to do, and this is how you should. Mm-hmm. We were like, yo, I told her, we're all coaches here. We work with athletes in a high-impact sport. We deal with like these sorts of falls all the time. You probably have a concussion. You should go to a doctor. But if you say you're okay, I can't tell you that you're not. Right. But yeah, we were like the whole time. I'm like, go. Yeah, away. so we're like, come on come over on here. Away yeah, from like, the oh, it's hot. The sun. Like, let's get in the shade. The shade's over here. You know, yeah. like, trying to guide her away. They would have, dude. Hundred percent. They would have want. They would have gone back down to get that hearing aid, the lost hearing aid, well, hundred things are expensive. Right. I mean, I'm not going to segue into <laughs> politics. Now. Right. Those they are, are like five, six grand a piece. They're like really? cheap ones. They're super expensive, yeah. but it, it's just this, the mindset of people who are out of touch with what they're physically capable of doing mm-hmm. and the risk at hand, they'll do it. They'll be like, no, I'm going back for the hearing aid. And, and you're in, going back down the thing you just fell and you have no real way of, like, they must have been, they were not cu- uh, aware that they would have not been able to get back up. Like, she would not have been able to get back up that hill. There's not no easily. way. Oh, man. I would, I'd wager that would have been a call unless someone else could have helped to the, to the paramedics. To well, yeah, uh, the fire department, they say that they're always over there saving people from the river. Is This, oh, this was just over there. Yeah. The river. yeah. Like, there's always That's why they're always people. up there. I yeah. always thought that they were practicing like cold water recovery. They, they or, like, practice that, but they also say that they, they actually return to that spot to save that people makes multiple sense. times through the year. So, oh. well, we just sure. save taxpayer dollars. I'm going to rebate. Yeah. yeah. I see them all the time over there when I drive by, you know, my little scooter. And I'm like, oh, cool. They must be doing like water, like, you know, water recovery saves and stuff like that. And I'm like, good on them. No, nope. but no, they're actually, they're just not crazy. practicing. They're doing. That's, that's yeah. crazy. So also because I'm a dad. I was highly confident I would find this hearing aid. <laughs> and so I just waited for all of the loose like material in the sand and whatnot that had been kicked up to clear from the river so that it was clear again. Yeah. And I looked down the river also seeing all the critters that were in there that was highly uncomfortable being around after in, in retrospect. Um, and yeah, this little, this little freak, it was happening. Oh, there was this little <laughs> yes. freaking crawdad had the hearing aid because it's shiny. Yes. And he was trying to run off with it. This is very Moana. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shiny. 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 (laughs) So I snatched it from him. We gave it back. They had their hearing aid. And then 10 minutes later, we see them strolling back by like they wanted to finish their walk with their little dog. And I'm just like, oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, there's there's, uh, some respect 
that I have to give for someone who's like, nope, I'm going to do it anyways, right? Like there's, there, but there's a line there between like, I'm going to go for it. And like, I'm going to hike this mountain, even though I'm in my, you know, late sixties, early seventies. And I've been desk bound the majority of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm going to go for it. Like, I respect that, but you're right. Sometimes people are so out of touch with what they can do that that confidence or that ego is actually more of a detriment, yeah. right? Like it's one thing to overestimate yourself by a small margin, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all have stories of us doing things where we get into it and we're like, hmm, halfway in the climb up this building, you're like, Why? this was a bad idea. <laughs> but it's easier to go up than it is to go back down. So I'm just going to finish it, right? Like that's like a small overestimation of, of your abilities, but it'd be... It that was a gross overestimation of, yeah. of both her health after the injury mm-hmm. and the fall, and her health before the fall. Right mm-hmm. to be able to like take that side offshoot mm-hmm. on a slidey rock with a dog. You know, I have who's, no like, idea on why they were down there. It was yeah. on the dog was on a leash. I have no idea why why they were down there. That's another thing. That's another topic. As far as we know, she lives today, though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, probably has some like, yeah, some neck pain and stuff like that too, I would imagine. So this bleeds really, yeah. well, that was the wrong verb. <laughs> this, this segues <laughs> right, this tumbles, this tumbles right, right in. into the subject <laughs> of what should you know about parkour and by should we mean capital, all caps should, right? Not suggestively, but adamantly what should you know as long as it's within your physical ability. So I'm going to start with that caveat because that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think that the biggest thing I know about part, parkour people, people who have been spent time on the discipline and not just the social aspects of loitering around a jam, you have a very good understanding of not only like surfaces, assuming you train indoor and outdoor, but even if you train indoor, some stability there. Um, and you have a very good understanding of what you could do at any given moment physically. Like, yeah. you know that. You know the space around you. It's not just like you're hoping that you make it or you think you can make it. You actually know with, with, with at least within what, like, what would you guys say? Most people are hanging around 5 to 10% accuracy just by looking at something, what they can do when they're proficient. 95 Yeah. I'm sorry. 95 to... Was like, yeah, air, awful. air. Those sorry. Are it was upside down. Those are awful, yeah. Our, our athletes only understand 5% of their capabilities <laughs> when jumping gaps. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I mean, and it's pretty innate, right? Like, like people will stand at a jump and they'll be like, I think I can hit that, right? And they're reasonably confident and then they'll hit it. And even if they don't hit it, they hit it or they miss by a very small margin, right? So they jump and they very catch it with small. their feet, but their hips are just like a little bit, just maybe five or 10 degrees too shy from them to land on it and they bounce back and they're like, oh, yeah. I guess not yet. Perfect example. Would you guys see um, uh, Renee's video, Origins of His Bail from that Yeah, back? the knee. Yeah, the knee, right? Where he was he's like, oh, way. yeah, millimeters, right? He's talking about where his foot hits and I would have blamed the shadow because I looked at the video and it was a tree and sometimes trees like create shadows and then you'll, you'll look at a target and it'll look one way and then the tree will blow and then you'll see a shadow over it where you train there for 10 minutes and now the shadow's over where you were jumping before. Mm -hmm. And that has an effect on depth perception. So we're talking about that. We're like, oh, the difference was two millimeters in a shadow. Yeah. Like that's the margin of error we're operating in. These people are like an entire geographic terra, (laughs) right? They're like, can't move on a grade of earth that passes a certain degree, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think a lot of people just will walk. I think that's how people fall off like Grand Canyon situation and stuff like that too, where people, um, a certain number of people a year will fall into the Grand Canyon, not because they were doing a gap, but because they stepped on a rock on the edge of the Grand Canyon and slipped and fell in. It's a real thing. I might be making that up. <laughs> I've been very, like, I've been on facts I mean, I right now. We'll it's check. Huge. It's Call in, you'll link out. I the whole thing, but. How, oh, I don't even want it. Don't even want to know? That sounds yeah. awful. It is. Sorry, guys, but it's the honest truth. We need to know. This is why we should know some things about parkour. So yes. what are the things? I think earlier I would have said things, well, you should probably know to broad jump. But now I'm thinking things like after our incident, you know, whatever, a couple of days ago, I'm thinking maybe surfaces. Parkour yeah. people know surfaces. So what, what's that? That would be like, I feel like the proprioception. Is that a, a good one to describe? Uh, I think it's extraoception in that context, but I could be wrong. Well, it's both. No matter what, yeah. it's proprioception. Yeah. But it might also be extraoception as well. So yeah, I'm just trying to put that into a word on like what 
what skill parkour teaches you that defines that? How many people fall? Two to three. A year? A year. Oh, okay, that's pretty low. What? If that's you, I mean, Grand Canyon's huge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess some people visit the Grand Canyon every year. Bro, it's not a net. It's not like people are flying over and then there's that. It's like uh, the same. I'm certain there are areas with nets, though. Like your viewing balconies yeah. probably have nets under them. I'm mostly for I've trash been twice, and, and it's like people who have not been out of the house. And then the people successful. like these people just, they're people. I'm not sure when in your cognition, at what age, there's like the, I fell and I'm making a bad choice. Like we talk about if a kid trips or something and he's so anxious to keep going in a course, he'll just go no matter what, adrenaline, fight or flight. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I'm also talking about there's some age you reach or some cognitive dissidence that you arrive at that, that you stop being able to sens- sensibly say what you can and can't do around an area of danger. And, yeah. I, and I think that's somewhere for, it seems to be in the 60s. Um, for adults, that's just an observation that I've made. Yeah, and you definitely can't you can't, you can't survive very long in parkour without the knowledge of what you can do. So it's somewhere course. along the line you are learning it, and it's constantly tested mm-hmm. yep. and testing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. test and retest. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's a really good one. I think I think I have another tangent, but I want to keep going on this and find out more on. Mm-hmm. Jesse, I'm, I think that's my big one. It's, it's just huge. It's I think it applies to almost every other sport. In depth, perception, and yeah. balance. I think and it, it feels a bit like a cop-out answer, but I think crawling. Yeah. Like the yeah. number of times, if, if, our, if our priority is like injury mitigation, very, very few skills will come even close to that sort of potency as crawling, right? Like I can't tell you the number of times that I've been like in my own house with a glass of water and then like running up the stairs and then my cat's like surprise dad and I'm like oh Jesus and I kick the stair right and then I like yeah. one hand on the stair and I kind of like right. like a cat and then right. I'm like, and then I run up the stairs right like that for me is like I, it happens to me more often than I'd like to admit <laughs> but right but for some people that's a wrist break but for some people that that's an actual injury right mm-hmm. they're like oh yeah you know I was running up the stairs I tripped I you know stuck my hand out there hit the lip of the stair and Boom, there goes, you know, I broke a metacarpal or I broke a finger or something like that. So, and like, on, it didn't hit my head. On demand grudge um, crawl. <laughs> just any, just, just that an increased variation in crawling, right? Like, not just like regular old, uh, just start where you can, but not just regular old hands and knees crawling, but all sorts of crawling. Crawling with, you know, two legs and one arm, crawling with two arms and one leg, crawling on your stomach. These sorts of things, like, because when you fall, you don't get to choose in what direction you fall or with what force. It's a reaction you know? or, or, yeah. or train, train and, a reaction. And had, you know, that, that gal who was walking on the trail crawled, she might have been able, when she started slipping, to drop into some sort of QM position mm-hmm. and slide her way into the river rather than falling and snapping her neck on a freaking root, you know? Because yeah, the truth is, she was probably sliding stood up straighter Mm -hmm. and stiffened Mm -hmm. because she's like, I need stability, right? And that's what we do when we fall. We straighten and we try and get stiff Mm -hmm. because that's stable to our brain. Like Bambi. Of course, yeah. And of course, because she's sliding, that's just like, great. You're not going to fight me at all, Uh right? And But if she had dropped into a crawl, she probably would have been able to grab some roots or just flattened herself out and just, and she would have been scraped up. But she wouldn't have hit her head. I would have gone she relaxed wouldn't. and flat because there was still enough of a grade that if you slipped, you yeah. just, you know, try and fall mountainside. Mm-hmm. Another thing that you might need. You get, your, you get as close to the mountain as you want, as you can. Yep. 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 Right. Even grade. though that's like cactuses well, in Colorado, that's like cactus, Colorado native grass, which is really just weeds. Dude, we found, like, we found snake eggs right by that spot. Snake eggs, right? But the <laughs> truth is like, I mean, snake's probably going to run away before it's going to bite you. Right. Um. And you're going to get scraped up, but it's better yeah. than just freaking Don't tomahawking down yeah. the mountain. Slinky down the mountain. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It was rough. Sliding better. Uh, <laughs> so my boat, my, one of mine is, is crawling. I yeah. think you absolutely need to crawl in as many unique ways as possible. Yeah, and, and then getting up, right? That's very close to crawling. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, yeah, they were measuring what when we were doing squat research or whatever, we were seeing documentation from people who are me- me- uh, measuring independence and livelihood as you get older mm-hmm. uh, around how many points of contact you had in order to go from a like a laying position, like a supine laying, laying position into standing. So you guys can dread that. I thought that it was test the right number now. of 
Ex- well, I'm sure it's number of points extremely? of contact too, but I thought it was the number of movements that you had to break it into, right? So like if you could go from, you know, supine position to a squat to standing, that's two, right? Okay. So that's or if one. you need to go supine, roll over, push up, rock back, mm-hmm. grab something, lever yourself up, right? Like now you're breaking into five or six, right? Or and obviously if you can't get up at all, then your independence is Yeah, so that's a good test, you guys. If you're in a safe spot, um, I'm have to say that. I can't believe I have to say that. Well, I feel like safe from embarrassment too. Uh, yeah, I'm less <laughs> concerned about your embarrassment, but yeah, be ready for it. <laughs> Lie down on your back. <laughs> Don't do this alone in case you can't get up. <laughs> Lie down on your back and then see where I hang a rope. Yeah, have, a, have, a, have an escape plan or buy your phone by you. Lie on your back and then see how many points of contact or how many positions you have to get into or how many extremities you have to use, meaning can you do it without hands? Can you do it with just going from like your, you know, your back to your butt to your feet, you know, and see what your limitations are there because there's a strong correlation between independent living and, and health and your ability to use a minimum number of, of movements to ascend to back to standing. So that's a really good one. Yeah, and, and I would lump in and I would say that crawling and the all-encompassing term that that is, um, we use the term QM, quadrupedal movement, just to encompass anything where you're using all four limbs on the ground. But I would say that that's pretty much your transition piece from laying on your stomach on the ground to a squat position. Anything and everything yeah. that you would do in that realm or that elevation I would lump in as like crawling. So if people are like, well, I, I got to do like crab walk and like it, you should do crab walk. You should do like what we, you know, what we call forward QM, but is really like bear crawl or something like that. You should be doing those, but you should also be doing the funkier things, you know, like on your elbows and like mm-hmm. on your shoulder and, you know, on your knees and your butt, those sorts of things I would all lump in as like QM and crawling. Right. Now, wrestlers are going to be really good at that, too. Wrestlers are going to be great at that yeah. because not only are yeah. they in that position, but there's also another sweaty person trying to get them out of that position. Yep. So and not only do they have to be good at that position, they've got to be able to fight in that position. Yeah. Wrestlers are going to be great at that. Yeah. Same with, like, jiu-jitsu, which I guess... If you, like, yeah, when you, you say wrestler, I just wrestler. think jits right away. But yeah, you're right. Like, traditional wrestler, we have to have the same thing. Sumo wrestler is probably not. So not as much. Not as much. Not but as I, much. I would be impressed. <laughs> I, I would... Maybe. I would probably be impressed with their mobility. <laughs> they still have to get up. Their they still speed get up. is really huge too. I mean, they're they're yeah. fast. They're power athletes. athletes. They are power with athletes. a lot of fluff. Power athletes <laughs> in a particular package. There you and go. Alliteration. We were talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. What's your what's your rant? Um, well, uh, the movements I think are jumping and squatting. Were the other the other ones we're missing right now. Um, yep. The squatting I think is applicable for everyone in Colorado. If you're skiing. Uh, I feel like if the only time you're squatting is when you're on the mountain or the and you're going down a slope, you're going to be in some trouble too. So, uh, and I feel like jumping, like leaving the ground and being in the air is also like just something that's so like alien to people that, and, and like leaning and dealing with that. You see that when people who go cliff uh, jumping and they jump in the air, they jump off the mountain and they like start rotating in the air because they just have no idea how to control that, that I don't, I don't know what that is, that tilt. Tilt, yeah, tilt uh, midair. Mm-hmm. So I think jumping helps you with that. But also because I think jumping, when you jump enough times, you're going to fall and you get comfortable with the falling. And, and, I, and I think there's some controversy around whether we train falling on purpose, um, where I think, uh, and I think as, as, as for myself, that training it like indirectly is a little more beneficial and a little more realistic, where if you do a sport that the intention isn't to fall, but is to have something else and you end up falling and the it's in between where you learn how to deal with the ground and, and odd angles. I think that's better. I think that you're learning. So talk to me about, because I feel like one of the, the context of the situation of the, of it matters so much because there's some things that you may hang of those. There's some of those things that you may hang on to for your entire life. Or if you're just not interested in cliff di- diving, right? Which, yeah. But I don't think the majority of the population yeah. should cliff be. Jumping. Cliff jumping. Yeah. Yeah. Diving. <laughs> cliff diving. <That's laughs> <another piece. laughs> I would yeah. say both are in the like probably shouldn't like do category for me. I've done it 
But if my daughter was like, hey, I'm going cliff jumping, I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> We're going to take Nova cliff jumping. Don't worry. No, you're not. I tried and true yeah. for Khan's location. I've done so. some super risky if I, I mean, and it's And then it is a pretty big thing in parkour now to like eventually move to cliff jumping yeah. and, and, and flips off. Uh, Place, but yeah, I think jumping person. in there's it's a whole that's a whole nother skill versus what someone would want to we're in the should category so first of all i don't think you should cliff jump like should no capital should is not for cliff jumping unless you yeah. want the instagram videos <clears throat> you can but it's not a should uh the so so we we have this 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 kind so when you talk about jumping and like uh, you know awareness and like space um when you're off the ground and whatnot that position and where you are in in uh in space uh, the I think that that is is something that that could be argued like there's different levels of it, right? So we're talking about should you be able to maneuver around your environment, understand what it's like to stand on loose sand or potentially like stuff that could crumble and you can slip on and fall in the river? Um, like should you be able to walk on like if oil gets on your wood floor in your house or something like that? Like there's those sort of things that you're probably going to encounter just by being an average person. But then there's also another category of things is, well, if you are going to be someone who's going to do, let's say you're a traditional climber, right? So you've got, like, you're a trad climber and you're like, I'm going climbing into the, um, what, what's a, what's up north? The, it's a lot of things. Beta Woo? Sure. Yeah, like, sure. The, yeah, so Beta Woo is up in Wyoming <laughs> and it's like, yeah. yeah, you, to do traditional climbing up there, it's a bunch of like, it looks like Sedona or one of those other, like, uh, um, very like rocky Flintstone um, sort of places, lots of smooth rock, lots of rock stacked on rock over time. And just getting to the place where you're supposed to climb, not easy, right? There's And if you're just a climber who climbs up things and you don't stand on things much, <laughs> you should learn parkour so that you can get more safely to whatever spot you're climbing. If you are a hiker mm-hmm. and you're like, running around with a bunch of gear on you, but you're still going to try and climb longs, right? Which is a 14, 14er in, in Colorado here, lo- close to us. <clears throat> if you're going to do a big hike like that, you probably should understand really good balance. Like there's just rocks and stuff you're going to be standing on where you'll want to have... Oh, and you should understand climbing, right? In some capacity, because... At least scrambling. Yeah, yeah. Which is QM. Which is QM. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So crawl, yeah. I guess climbing is really just QM vertically. Yep. What was your song? Uh, climbing up and down. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> yeah. that was my song. Uppy, uppy, downy. Uppy, uh, downy. Oh, I hate it. Oh, it's great. You guys can hear the remix. Yeah. So uh, the the other story that I had when you guys were saving that um, lady in the river is that I had that uh, similar story skiing. We were on the top of the mountain it's blizzarding up there oh that was this last year yeah it's yeah. blizzarding up there and yeah, again older older couple uh, can't see in front of your face Set i'm up there I, I get up the chairlift and then one of the first thoughts the blizzard hits me in the face uh and i'm like what am i doing up here i can't believe i'm on the top of this mountain with these sleds attached to my feet and here i am just gonna go down there take it easy no warm-up today and right as I, I'm thinking this, this lady I see, she's like tangled up in her poles and her skis and she's yelling, help. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to head on over there. And I see her knees starting to like cave in. I'm like, don't move, ma'am. Stay right there. And I'm like <laughs> sidestepping up the mountain. I'm like, don't move, ma'am. And she keeps moving. And all of a sudden it's like pop. And both knees go in and the skis slide out. And I'm like, oh, man. Uh, and I and I go over there, help her like untangle her, get her boots off and everything, and and I and I the, said the pop was her skis coming off. Right? No, 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 it was, it was her knee. knee. Oh. <laughs> I yeah. popped the skis off. <laughs> yeah, she and, blew and out she's like, it popped, MCL. it popped, and uh, and yeah, and I think there there is there's something that I in Colorado I noticed that there's like people just feel invincible on that mountain. And I feel the exact opposite when I ski. I feel Respect. like I am like That's this good. tiny little you know, fragile piece of glass and I'm hurtling down this mountain and I only, and I think I only know that because in parkour, I never go that fast. I never travel anywhere close to 20 miles an hour. And you've hit uh, hard things. At and I've hit that hard speed. things at yet yeah, eight miles an hour. Right. And so when, when I see just the vast majority of people skiing in Colorado and they're just like, I hit 60 miles an hour today. I tracked it on my phone. I'm like, you guys have no idea. These are the same people <laughs> at Walmart. 
Yes. I'm just saying, look oh around Walmart, you guys. It's not. You imagine you come to Colorado and there is these all these athletes. And it's true, there are a lot of athletes. And there are a lot of people who are very good at this, and they understand it. They've just accepted the risk. And again, this is that we were, we were joking about survivor bias last time. A lot of like I have students, like one of some of my most like badass students are like 65 year old skiers who come in here and want to train parkour, and they do a really good job. They yeah. roll, and they're not afraid, and that's great. But there is a there is a, to- a risk tolerance and an injury tolerance that is going down as you get older. It just it may not be the biggest lever, but it's happening. And that so that spot was high. That was at Steamboat. That was above tree line. So if you don't know what that is, there's a certain place and altitude in which trees don't grow because you're up high. And so that was above tree line. And she well might not have been exactly above tree line. It was clear. It was pretty close. It's clear. Yeah, I, it's, I mean, it had really to have flat. been That's 12. why she had a hard time because there's no contrast. This yeah. guy in the ground. And it was, you couldn't see in front of your hand because I heard this, I heard the screens, but yeah. I just assumed it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was just waiting for you, dude. It's like. That, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got separated right there. So, um, anyway, that these, it's, it's what I would highly caution people around is this, again, this disassociation. They imagine this is what it's going to be like. And also people's willingness. You'll observe this when you see tornadoes in, on interstates. Have you ever seen video of tornado on interstate? No. Well, yeah. 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 Go, lots of videos. go look it up. Or avalanches on interstate and watch. Or fires in California on interstate. No one's stopping. Oh, you see okay. a few brake lights, but they're like, well, everybody's driving, so it must be yes. fine. Like, I'm the dad who would be like, nope, we're turning around. Or have you ever seen that video of, like, the worst dad ever? It's like on, uh, if you if you Google it, you'll probably find it. Like, worst dad ever at a ski resort or something. And, like, there's an avalanche, and all the kids are panicky. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, man, they're sitting outside on, like, the, the balcony eating lunch. And they see the avalanche in the background, and the kid's security camera's watching them. And then the mom gets up, stands up immediately, like, we gotta go. And then the dad just like, oh, no, sit down and like pulls his phone out or something. And then, <laughs> of course, the avalanche comes towards him. And then the dad pushes the, the younger son, like seven or eight, out of the way to escape the, <laughs> the avalanche. And I was like, no, you guys, just because you're on a patio doesn't mean you're safe. Because you're in a car doesn't mean you're safe. Like, mm-hmm. I always, everyone around you is doing the same thing. Absolutely. Like, well, you, see no it, indication. you see it here in Colorado pretty often. I Pretty much every time we get our first snowstorm, uh, we have the interstates just jammed with four or five accidents, right? And whether that's non-natives, people that are out here visiting during, you know, the like holiday season, but they drive and they see the interstate and they're like, well, that person in front of me is driving and the person behind me is driving, so it must be fine to drive in this blizzard, right? right. And then that yeah. person up in front of them is actually going here and the road goes that way. And so they're like, well... Okay, and now you have two or three cars that just went right off the road because people are just like, oh, he's driving. He's probably following the road, yeah. so I'm going to follow him. And there's a little bit of logic in that, but not a lot because he's going to be like, there's no one in front of me, so I guess the road goes here, right? And in the snowstorms, yeah, that's a that's like a fine example of like just because you are in like a car or something and other people are doing similar activities doesn't always mean that you're safe. Yeah, yeah, somebody has to be the first one to turn around when you're driving into a or forest just fire. Go slower. Yeah. Right? Like that's a big thing in injury <laughs> prevention too, is like like this relates to cars and skiing, but it also relates to movement and that like if you're training something and you want to hit a jump, you don't always have to run from, you know, the end zone over there. Full sprint into the jump. Yo, no! <laughs> yeah. Right? Because, like, especially if, if you're of the type that hasn't been moving recently in, a, in a, like, a lot of different situations, you're overestimating your abilities. Start small. Start the jump with no run-up. Right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes that poses its own injury risk right there already. So, like, sometimes just go slower is okay. Yeah. Slow is yes. smooth. Smooth is yeah, fast, I feel like, right? like if your speed is at max speed and your effort is at max effort, your injury potential it's is max. at max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's like your injury potential is the average of the two. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I just, and, uh, you know, obviously you can't, the injury potential can be high too when you're going slow, but I just, when you, when you add speed to it, uh, yeah, the damage is, the potential for damage, damage is greater. And I feel like that is kind of something unique to parkour. Like you learn that really quick. And that's something that we teach quite a bit is for kids who are just running full speed at almost any challenge they get. 
it's to slow it down and to learn it at a at an easier pace, at a safer pace. Before you're adding that speed, and so I think the parkour man, there's just so many good things about it. Like the the philosophy of learning in parkour forces you to be safer, and it's yeah. and it's a controlled context because in many ways, because if you're learning it in the right space, your the danger is not as much, right? So it's like it, I remember this would be similar in martial arts too, where you'd have new people coming in, and if they spar, you'd be like. Fight. And then they just be like, ah, and they just start wailing. That's like 110. They're just like throwing everything. So you, everyone can imagine that happening in a martial arts context. Now imagine it with boxes and bars and, and wood. It's like you bring someone in, you're like, okay, there's your course. Go. And there's like, ah, and they either would crumble into themselves and break themselves. That's why we don't teach speed courses earlier yeah. um, without having very flat surfaces or very controlled scenario. Um, because well, they'll do that. And we've all sparred against newbies before right and yeah. it's like i would rather spar against somebody who's significantly higher you know combatives than me than somebody who's the inverse as a noob because they'll come in and you'll be like all right yeah let's play light and they'll just sock you in the face <laughs> yeah. yeah full power and you're like oh slow down here this yeah. is not a street fight goodness <laughs> gracious right it's like uh <laughs> the again the the like contextual awareness yeah. i don't want to just throw that out there we could say we could have started the podcast well you need to have situational and contextual awareness to me that's, that's yeah. a bunch of duh and a, and most people who say stuff like that are are you get get in the weeds a little bit with it you know what i mean like that's all i'm saying with that stuff like that's assumed right know your situations know your context but what do we really mean by that and i think that with parkour a lot of it is you are very in touch with your capabilities at any yeah. given time. And the people who aren't are the, are like you'll see with younger people who will be like, I should be able to do that because my peers are doing that. So I'm going to try it. But that's again, the problem, same problem. You're out of touch or you're older and you're like, you, th- because you could do it 15 years ago, you think you still can at mm-hmm. 65. And that's another one of those things. You're just out of touch. So I think that parkour is in touch. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you can be out of touch for a little bit, but it's you just learn so quickly because people around you are doing things, uh, you know, that you compare yourself to and you start to see who's at your same level and what they're capable of. So that's another like just set of data that you can get and helps you determine what you're capable of. Um, but yeah, you just learn how hard it is to do the simplest things too. how hard it is to do a, your max jump, how simple something like that is and how one day you can have it, one day you can't. Like, so this is a very oh that's a good that's a good observation because this is a very common thing I I will do to adults when they come into my program. I will put the the rail out on the ground, right? So the diameter is what like three it was three two point one two point one two point one inch diameter rail on the ground, literally <laughs> half an inch from the ground, right? Maybe they would fall five inches if if they jumped a little bit as they fell off it, and then I ask them to stand on it for any period of time. And most adults coming in can't, even if they were slackliners or they were trapeze artists or something, most adults can't come in, or kids for that matter too, and stand for any amount of time on a rail. And it frustrates them right away. <laughs> and then they say things yeah. like, well, I feel like I should be able to do, do that. So yeah. what do you think that should is? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. That's... Uh... Um, I could see like I, if you were a slackliner or any sort of circus, I could see that being very frustrating. That's, I, that's almost justified <laughs> that, that you get I, mad at that. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've met a lot of like slackliners who will balance on a rail or something like that, and it'll be challenging. But they they'll get it. Pretty they'll quick. try it yeah. five times, and by the fifth time, they're able to like stand on there for a good thirty seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're they're so used to like getting in that new environment and adapting to it very quickly. As they have to calibrate. Balance. Yeah, exactly. Um, because normally in slackline. The slack line moves, right? Mm-hmm. So they actually want to stay. Yeah. They want to be the move the bar. Yeah, they want to be the fulcrum. But, the but on, the, on a stable object, the fulcrum is now the bar, right? And so they yeah. have to re- reverse what they're used to. Um, as for like general people, parkour practitioners balancing on a bar, I like 60 seconds. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Easy. For, that's forward balance. So with the bar running along both feet. Straddle, not straddling the bar, but yeah, running. you're running. Yeah, no, never straddle a bar. <laughs> no, no, like yeah, balls well, of your perpendicular. feet perpendicular yeah. to your feet is yeah. the bar. That's what uh, I call forward balance. So sixty seconds forward, and then sixty seconds on each foot, facing parallel with the bar. Yeah, is is my should for a parkour athlete, regardless of your skill level. 
If you're brand new, that should be your priority. If you're experienced, that should be something you tap in on every now and then. Even if you're used to doing big precisions where you hit the bar and you stick it, right? And you're at height and you're doing these really high level skills, you should always take time to come in and tap in and be like, cool, do I still have these, you know, these That's one of the easiest things to practice at home. Super too, easy. So. Very low risk and easy to do while you're watching Netflix, reading a book, do it before you go to bed, do it when you wake up, when you're brushing your teeth, like so many opportunities for you to do that. So I want to I want to take a moment to call out, um, since I do want to stir the pot a little bit, um, what... Uh, what is uh, the mind mover guy call them? Soccer trainers? Soccer, <laughs> soccer trainers. I want to call it soccer trainers for a minute. Because if you want to be, uh, if you want to find, pe- if you want to build a skill, you go to the people who are capable of the skill. So when we talk about the shoulds, parkour is definitely a should for balance, right? You should not go to the typical Globo Gym trainer and then be subject to whatever buso buso ball rigor mortem oh, that yeah, they're going to no, throw at you, you with like a bar on your head balancing a sippy cup like you're some sort of poor circus bear, right? <laughs> <laughs> this buso ball stuff is ridiculous. If you gave buso balls to parkour, Bosu? I, I think it's one one Bosu? Bosu? I think it's Bosu. It's B O S U, right? Mm, maybe it's my Midwestern accent. <laughs> I got them. Bo- they got them buso balls. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in the West makes fun of accents, like, but we don't actually talk like that. We're just really boring. Bo- 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 balls. That's like the Midwestern accent. Well, because I, I got my trainer, and we were talking about the bosu balls, and he had me balancing there for a minute or two. And boy, I tell you, I didn't, hadn't felt like that since I was on the chicken coop back in eighth grade, and fell off. And Betsy didn't date me no more because he oh said I gosh. couldn't balance on the chicken. You know, stuff like that yeah. happens. Yeah. It's yeah, true. Breakups are. Terrible for that reason in Iowa. I'm just playing Iowa. I know you guys don't know anything about outside. And there's probably more <laughs> Iowans listening to this than me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, there are probably a lot of like all of my buddies are like, dang it, Trav, that's not how we talk, <laughs> right? Because that's how they talk. Okay, okay. sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll love love to Iowa. I, I'm married to one, so that's right. You're I'll married love. into Iowa. Woo. So, man. Lots of love for. Oh Iowa. wait, We'd hold like up. I got a shout out because no one's talking about this on the news. Iowa got hit by a hurricane, oh, an yeah. inland hurricane. My and hometown. Nobody's coverage. Nobody's covering it. My wow. hometown is like leveled. Like my friends are like, yeah, there's no power. It's been that way for a week and a half. It's like, it's like a similar scenario to what was going on. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to make a gross over simplification of what, like what Puerto Rico went through or whatnot, but it's like no power, power lines blown over, silos blown over. Um, this was just wind. This right? was, yeah. So they had, it was called a land hurricane. Durancho or, or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, it has an interesting name to it. I didn't even know it was a yeah, tornado. I think, Not a tornado. Uh, no, a no but it's tornadic speeds. Like, yeah. it was 100 mile an hour winds yeah. with gusts up to like 160 or something. That's tornado. Like, a tornado is 150 miles an hour, 120 miles. That's a class, yeah. like, one tornado. So, it was basically a tornado that hit an entire region. The satellite shows all the corn flat. So, when you look at over Iowa now, it just looks like someone wiped their hand oh, like on an Etch-a-Sketch yeah. or something across the state. And that hit that hit my hometown. And people's like, yeah, the roofs just blew off. Like there were literally people who just half their house was just like blown open, roofs mm-hmm. off. Like, and it's not just one spot. Like a tornado like draws a line. The line was like a thumb across eastern Iowa in, in entirety. So if you guys, I don't know how to help Iowans. Iowans are very self-sufficient. If you called them up, they'd be like, yeah, well, you know, we don't have power. What are you going to do? Like, they would just fix it themselves. Don't worry. They're going to call their uncles and do it. But there is, like, apparently some National Guard there now. But anyway. But, yeah, bring awareness to it. Because, yeah, I've got family, too, that we were talking with. And they're like, yeah, the power company says they won't be able to get out here to repair the lines for another two weeks. So they're just – and they're fine with it. That, that to me, is <laughs> dude, impressive. I'm because if that you. happened to me, dude, I'd be walking uh-huh. over to XL Energy here in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, yo, you send a tech out here right now. Because I got a whole neighborhood of people that need power, right? right. But the, like Iowans, they're just like, they're Don't. like, yep, no, nah, it's two weeks. You it's won't kind hear of anything but, you know, about it. They won't even vote different because of it. They're like, <laughs> well, you know, stuff happens. Well, I'm true. telling you, they so self-sufficient, won't complain. They know how to suffer. That's why like CrossFit in Iowa is probably like the highest level of suffering in silence. <laughs> but you'd be stoic. If people, all these people want to study stoicism, go to go Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> just go to Iowa. You're like, oh, stoicism sounds so romantic. Go. Go to Iowa. See what it's like. It's very stoic. Um, anyway, so 
shout out to my to my islands and friends and family like you guys we wish if you, you need anything just let me know i'm sure amazon will get dhl will send you something there <laughs> yeah. dhl will drive through anything they'll drive through anything they'll get you something if you need a gift box let me know uh i'll help you out but that's another scenario natural disaster some parkour you've got to be able to get to people climbing up on stuff matters and if you fall and you get hurt another thing parkour is a should but that's probably more like in the category of if you're police military fire like those guys don't even do anything with parkour they put so much gear on that they become very immobile right mm-hmm. it's like a lot of police you know police and fire the paramedics maybe not as much but they shouldn't you shouldn't like paramedics should have like sprightly like shoes on not like these they wear the <laughs> boots and stuff it's like no do you just get some get some of these asics or some strikes and those, those are onosuka yeah there's onosuka tigers Tiger? Yeah. Yeah, those tigers. No, tiger. Always, tiger always, always sneaks tiger. his way in the podcast. Where is he? He's sneaky tiger. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's tough with the with the equipment on. It's uh, parkour is a different. You got You have to change a lot of your body. It changes. Yep. It changes. Um, maybe parkour with a backpack is a good thing to train. But, now, but that doesn't. I I think that just speaks to the validity of our shoulds, and that those are still shoulds. With gear, right? You should still be able to crawl with gear. Yeah. You should still be able to handle or recognize varying surfaces with gear, right? You should be like, oh, that's loose pebble on asphalt. I know that if I try and change directions, it's going to right? Right? We know that balance still I should in gear. So those things are still staples regardless of whether you're in gear. Now, are you going to be doing like lashes and like climb ups in gear? Probably not. Mm-hmm. So those aren't shoulds. Yeah, I would agree. Those are bonuses. And it's also respectable that probably some farmers have some pretty good parkour because they're not putting like Coloradoans throwing crampons to go up Long's Peak. They're just out there in whatever, <laughs> like their card hearts. And like, and you're they're sliding down mud to ice to gravel to get to whatever on like a ditch or a slope. And if I saw someone carrying doing that, carrying a calf, <laughs> um, don't give these guys that much credit. They don't. They're moving that much. <laughs> I rub around them. They were like, well, I'm going down there because my keys fell or something. Um, so if they if they slide, skip, hop, and jump down there without falling down, I still say, mm, thumbs up, good parkour. Yeah. Like, I would consider that a parkour skill. And so that's really cool because it's contextual and it's just them. So we're missing anything on our shoulds. But Is there any They cat- should train from parkour, right? So I'm saying yeah, that's just- good parkour and they could learn that from training parkour. Okay. Like if they trained that specifically, I would call that parkour. I would, my last one would be, cause I think we've got a pretty good blanket of things would be some sort of hanging. Yeah, that's right. Not only is that a, a should for like just your, you know, your that's T-spine and like C-spine health? and like shoulder health. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but also because, when you fall, we've been, we've, you know, our first job was roofing, right? And thankfully, we've never fallen off a roof or had a, a near chance. But if I did, I would want to trust that I could grab the lip of the roof and hold myself there, right? And we see it all the time in movies where people like fall and they grab on things and then they like, they're like sliding and you're like, what? No. <laughs> no. Hold, you can't hang? Just like, just like that. And, they, and they're like here with two hands and they're sliding and the guy's above him and he's like, hold on, Timmy, hold on. He's like trying to climb down to him and Timmy's like, <laughs> right? And you're like, Timmy, it's a 30 second hang, bro. Like just chill, right? Now so, one arm hang is a, is, a, is can be tricky, especially if your hands are all sweaty and stuff. But I think everybody should be able to hang if we're talking about like the shoulds just yeah. just as like a catch all mm-hmm. you should be able to hang with both arms for at least 30 seconds without really straining yourself yeah and and so this is the type of thing you would really hope would be included in elements of PE and physical education mm-hmm. and yeah. we have a new program that we're baking up right now that's all kinds of awesome with all this stuff with schools being shut down and people doing more homeschooling and whatnot we're going to be dropping an outrun PE program soon we might talk about it in next week's podcast but yeah, more there, that's coming. more in more details pending. But that falls into the like should as far as what you should have been educated with, right? And and those are things like, well, you may end up in a scenario where you have to hang and here's how you would make sure. So I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that because you're like, there's two things. Um, 
one thing is context. I want to go back real quick to the Bus- Bosu ball, right? The Bosu <laughs> ball thing, okay? Bo- one, this context is almost irrelevant. Unless you live on some sort of Dr. Seuss marshmallow land, you are not balancing on the context that a Bosu ball provides. And somebody says, what about st- stability? You get ankle stability. Yeah, you'll get more ankle stability with calf raises. So just stop, okay? This is not... That isn't, it is like training down a rabbit hole. It is not needed and it shouldn't be doing it with a barbell on your back unless you're doing it for performance. Yeah. And if you're really that concerned about impressing anyone on a Bosu ball, the training that you do on a rail will just make you better at it without. Oh, life hack. It won't impress anyone. (laughs) You're not getting dates for that. Maybe. I don't know. Bury it in the sand and do flips on it on the beach. Maybe. I think, I think the, the Bosu ball has its place, has its place in like, you know, PT and, you know, recreational therapy, those sorts of areas where you're, you're trying to simulate some sort of unstable environment. But yeah, for most like average people, you're really wasting your time doing both. Yeah, I mean, even- and not only are you wasting your time, you're exponentially increasing the risk, right? Like people who are doing weighted high bar back squats with a BOSU ball, rack that thing, throw that BOSU ball out the window <laughs> And thank me a year from now when your knees don't blow out because the Bosu ball suddenly deflated and you dropped 135 oh. pounds on, you know. I'm just out, I'm just going to go out on a limb and, and usually I'm pretty non... I don't like to take fixed positions because Bruce Lee told me never to. But, and not literally, I just read it. Yes, in the, he's my other spirit animal. All right. So, uh, don't... I, I would say if you are a PT and you're using Buso balls or you're, you're, you're a personal trainer or you're a physical therapist and you're using either PT, <laughs> uh, stop. It makes no sense. It, is, it, it, it may seem like it makes sense, but here's why it doesn't make sense. To a parkour person or a parkour coach, what I would do, because I work with a lot of older clients now too, and I just worked on it from the movement perspective, not the... I'm trying to cure someone, someone's illness. They come to me and they're like, I can't. My balance is bad. I'm like, okay, well, you're going to learn parkour. And through learning parkour, wow, your balance translates really good in other places, right? It's like someone comes in and they can't even balance on their environment, like one block. And you're then saying, I'm going to put you in the circus. Because it's such a narrow skill being able to balance on a BOSU ball. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it translates. And I think that, I think it's just a gimmick. I straight up think it's a gimmick. But I think, I don't think it's a gimmick. I think there are more effective alternatives that exist, but you may not have the ability to access those all the time. Right, but your PT is responsible for understanding what works. And Sure, and if every session's on a BOSU ball, then yeah, you're probably wasting your time. But I'm not going to pretend to know all of you know, what it's encompassed in PT and mm-hmm. all the myriad of injuries that people may have. Sure. Um, and it's just another tool in the box, right? But like every, like everything else, they have their fads and they they become, you know, catchphrases and, and like, what's, mm-hmm. what's the term I'm looking for here? Um, uh, not cliche. Whatever. Um, buzzword. There we go. Buzzword. It, right. They have their like, oh, yeah. this is the new and trending thing. Um, and then people rely on that. And I don't think that the BOSU ball needs to not exist. One, because they're kind of fun. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. They, they can exist, but it's in circus. So <laughs> if, you, if you take them, sorry, Jess. So if you take them and look at what you get. Here's the perfect test. Give a, give a, um, give a BOSU, bo, BOSU? BOSU, BOSU ball to you know, whatever. The stupid know. blue. If you guys don't know what this is, it's the half, it's the half circle blue ball with the like black plastic base you'll see them ever everybody's like oh that's what they're talking about it's not an actual ball it's like a half ball half sphere that's inflated and is about your arms width around if you were to hug somebody and you're like me with really long arms so if you give that to parkour people they're gonna or even kids they'll slap it around and play with it like as if you gave it to like a little red panda or like you know a seal or something we would have a really good time with it yeah. we'd probably do some flips off of it we might run around and chase each other with it. We might try and do handstands on it. Yep. That's fine. It's a toy. Yeah. We would chew on it, get bored with it, and throw it away. It would have holes in it and teeth marks. And then, and then it'd be done. And then we'd go back to balancing on stuff like yep. real humans. 
I guess that's my point, is that you're further, the person's problem is that they need to get back to being a human when they're going through physical therapy. Now, again, I'm treading into space that I believe <laughs> I have authority in, but don't have certification in. So that's, that, you're, you're, you need to get them out and stand on a curb. They need to stand on a block. They need to work on one leg, two, you know, two legs. Why, you know, even if the balance is good on one leg, add some elevation, change the context, you know, get the, the stimulation different. So yeah, I just want, I actually want, I'm hoping the PT is listening to this and it's like, no, here's the studies that say that, um, that BOSU balls are amazing for you because I want to see it. And then I want to re reply and be like, no, nope, this would be better. But I'm more just trying to pick a fight with physical therapists at this point. So <laughs> I think, so, yeah, I'm not going to drag you guys or outrun into this. Of, this uh, is like me. This is Travis Lee, not outrun. Burn <laughs> the BOSU balls. Throw them in the town square. Light them aflame. Like, that's my, that's my feeling on it. All right. <laughs> They're a metaphor. To me. All right. Anyway, sorry. If somebody right now has been working on one and they feel good, like, I'm sorry. Like, you, it's still cool. If you can balance on one, it's cool. Just know it's like more circus I, than. I think that you've just never seen a proper representation of how it's implemented correctly. Mm. That's all. It's I, possible. I think you're a little hung up on like, yoga instagram girls like trying to do handstands and stuff on them and then somebody being like this is the most amazing thing for your health and shoulder I'm trying girl. to think of like, what jesse hates as much as you hate most of all right now uh, I hate as much as that would that would that would be fitness oriented this fitness. is that was a very like just personal jesse vibe oh we got just right? that's definitely a, that's definitely a me rant that you <laughs> went on there for sure yeah well i'm just trying to be vulnerable it's like, we all have That's like... It's a new side of you. I like it. <laughs> fiery, non-diplomatic It's fiery, non-diplomatic track. But that's... I'm going to do that. I'm not going to talk about masks like that, but I'm going to talk about... It's like, there's no harm, no foul in the, yeah. in the BOSU ball argument. Yes. There's not serious... Not, I don't think there's serious repercussions there. Yeah. Uh, the, you were talking about the, the context of hanging. So here's, what's, here's what I see a lot, and this is why I think you're right. It falls under should. I see this a lot. People think they can hang... And they can't. Yep. They will jump to a bar, peel out, and post up and fall on their wrist. They will jump up to a bar, and then they just plain can't hang. And then as we go further down this chain of things I've actually witnessed, which is people doing this. Literally last week, I was by a Globo gym. You know, I do my recon. I don't want to, like, endorse any gyms. But, you know, I do my recon at the Globo gym. And they have, like, like the, almost a monkey bar set up in one of those, like, Buso ball similar fitness <laughs> contraptions, right? The little like mouse trap, mouse wheel cage that they, they make. They do look like a, a Rube Goldberg machine sometimes. Yes. Like, I know what room <laughs> you're like talking about. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So this guy's up here and I, I'm like, oh, he's going to do some hanging. And he does some, you know, they're like monkey bars style. And he's like moving like one hand to the other and sort of just like re grabbing, re grabbing. And then he tries to do like, two two uh, rungs right so instead of grabbing from one to one which is about maybe like a foot apart he tries to go for the two foot one right now he's just he's got like a dad bod all right so he's probably carrying around a little extra with him that day and he and he goes for it and then i see him grab it and then he releases to do the next one which we would consider just very fundamental brachiation and then you just see him drop and grab his shoulder and he's like ah. and he tries to play it off like it doesn't hurt but you see him like holding it internally and I'm like I bet that dude at best just strained something in his rotator cuff yep. and all he was doing was trying to reach and regrab. We're not even talking about the Hollywood scenario where you're at the edge of the cliff and it's your one hand holding on. Um, we're talking about just re release and regrab and a single arm hang tearing your shoulder up. That's horrible because you think you can do it and you're going to try and do it and now he might have to use PT in a, in a BOSU ball. In a BOSU ball. Yeah. So you can just shoulder girdle back. Look at the now. spiral. Yeah, you gotta you gotta hang. You yeah. gotta do some sort of hanging, even if it's not your modality. And remember, Gandalf did an elbow support hold <laughs> with a demon and a freaking whip hanging from his ankle. Okay, and if Gandalf can hold there long enough to tell Frodo to fly and run away, you can hang like this for thirty seconds. All right? right. He did that, and Gandalf what I will point like is that his technique was legit because it was like a level two climb. Like yeah. he didn't go to his hands; he stayed on the shoulders. And he Very even tried. Supportive. He was even like, uh, yeah, down the center, right? <laughs> no asymmetry. Rocks, probably, you know. He knows. He's a wizard. He knows you don't have asymmetrical movements yeah. in climb-ups. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a later thing or not at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. And so 
The other thing I've seen happen, now I want to talk about other things, that injuries I've seen happen like that with guys. I had a friend uh, who worked with us and we had a climbing hold at the gym and uh, he just put his hands in the climbing hold, like the not the full grab, like a bar. And this is someone who did CrossFit. Put their fingers in the climbing hold. So, you know, you've got the first, you got the first two or three knuckles in there mm -hmm. and then went to support his own weight. And he's, he was, you know, a muscular guy, strong guy. And you just heard pop, pop, pop. Oh. And then he's like, I'm good. <laughs> and then two days later, he's back with him bandages. So he ripped like the ligaments in his oh. fingers. Yeah. That's just from the climbing hold. So guys out there, if you were climbing and doing amazing things when you were a teenager and you are now 20, 30, 40, or you've added on 20, 30, 40, <laughs> <laughs> and you go to hang on a climbing grip with just your fingers, do not tear your ligaments out of your fingers. <laughs> Second thing, a video I saw one time, this is in, this is for, for those, for the hope of those people. There was a guy and they were doing, you guys seen like wind sailing? What is it? Where you like have the, you're basically on a kite and it supports your waist and you're holding the, the rail in front of you, parasailing, right? And then he was taking a buddy with him. Now, they do this with a harness. So it's like the guy who's flying straps you in underneath you and then clips you in so that you're essentially holding onto the bar too. Both of you are holding on the bar, but yeah. he's suspended by the kite and then you're suspended by him, right? His back is clipped into the flyer's back. So he's flying underneath in tandem like that, right? So they go to take off. This is in like Europe. And they start to take off, and immediately he's like, clipped in. He, he isn't clipped in. Oh, no. And so this is like a normal guy, like an older guy, right, heavier. And his buddy's trying to fly, so we can't, he's trying to fly with one hand and hold on to him to hold him close. But he realizes he has to make the entire flight while the guy holds on to the bar. So this guy is obviously probably not a hanger. He's not a, probably not a climber. He's just like, help me, I don't want to die and fall from this kite, right? Again, things you shouldn't be doing. I say that. <laughs> Should, shouldn't as in like not a necessary. <laughs> right. It's definitely not necessary. Anyway, so he's hanging and this guy is actually, a, he doesn't let go until they make it down almost a full two minutes. I think it was something like a minute and 20 to two minutes. You can look it up. It's viral on YouTube. But he actually makes it down to about a 20-foot elevation, drops, like breaks a leg or something like that, but was able to hold. Now, they were up there. Like, it is not, yeah. like, a little bit off the ground. This yeah, guy's trying to get down fast enough. Yeah, he's going off cliff face. And he's trying to get the, the flyers, trying to hold on to him and get down. And this guy was able to hold untrained because this is what your mind will do when you know when it knows your life. It doesn't care. It will rip every muscle yep. in your arm Lockdown. because <laughs> it knows that if you fall, it's in fact, done. I'm surprised that he wasn't like they had to peel his fingers off, know, right? Because yeah. that, like, we've seen, we know there's like stories of that, right? Where like somebody's like just so locked up and their adrenaline, like they've essentially ripped all of these and th they're just locked, like this, locked. right? The so nervous system's like, no, we're checking like, out. They have to like, the, you know, paramedics have to like Pry. break ligaments to like open the hand up. Oh my you gosh. Know? Like because you just adrenaline is just like, like ah. yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Good on that guy. Para, so you I never know. Paragliding. I thought yeah. parasailing. There you was go. The water. Para that's the water. Paragliding. Yeah. I was thinking, like, how does he get in the ocean? And <laughs> all these people <laughs> are like listening from these other sports, and they're like, "You guys don't know anything about other sports." <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. Uh, paragliding. <laughs> sure. No enough. There's so many oh, variations. Yeah. We love them all. We just haven't researched. All I know is I saw you in Walmart on Tuesday, and you were doing that on Saturday. And I'm just saying, this is not. Guys, which is every people are just people, oh. and you have to learn some things in parkour apparently because is yeah people just aren't yeah, trained. I can't just, imagine they so train for that modality. And with our technology and with videos, and you see it, you're on Instagram, you see everyone doing all this cool stuff. The hype, life, right? And it's just like, oh well, there's people who are trained, and there's this technology, and so that means that I can literally do whatever I see and. And yeah, there is some reality that you just aren't aware of. Uh, right. I'm sure that lady yeah. was like, oh, I'm in Arizona, but it's a powder day and I have the money. So I'm going to pay and spend the two grand for the one way ticket yeah. from Phoenix to Steamboat. I'm going to fly right up same day on that mountain because we saw the number of people who were coming to Steamboat that day. Yeah. Fly up on that mountain. I'm going to take the lift all the way up. I skied 20 years ago. No big deal. You know, and snap, crop a pat, pop. I'm... <laughs> I'm luckily this parkour guy is there to. Sorry, I had like my Manhattan accent there for a second. Pat. So he, he luckily Justin is there, who yeah, is probably half her body weight to save me in this scenario. 
right? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's hard to be wow, aware cool. of of how difficult things can be when you just see videos of people doing it effortlessly. You guys don't need that pressure. No. There is what it's like to see it on Instagram, and there's what it's like to do it. Okay, watch what you want to watch, enjoy it for that reason, learn what you would love to do, and enjoy it for that reason. No pressure. And if you love Bosu balls, I'm not hating on you, but if you think that they're the solution, they're the I think they're. I think you hit it on the head there. If you think that they're the magic pill, mm -hmm. you're wrong. If you enjoy what you do there and you do see progress, yeah, fine, fine. But Good don't effort. don't be thinking that that's like the catch all. It's not. I think that's that's really your what your Travis Jesse is trying to get across. Right. My accent, my accent, <laughs> lexicon. Right. Is, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. There's more. I'm just frustrated because I feel like you have you have more. There's more right there. Well, and you can write a blog post on it. I will. I don't write, though. Uh, you write it, I'll edit it. Okay. I'll post it today. All right, you guys. So I think that's it for today's episode, unless you guys want to throw anything more or any other fitness tools under. Give me one fitness tool that, that you don't like. Shake weight. Shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, man. The Mr. one? <laughs> Mr. Shake weight. No, the one with the misting functionality or the. Oh, there's a misting. Yeah, there's oh, wow. shake weight that you can like. That. that sounds kind of like <laughs> refreshing. Yeah. It's like a salt shaker. I'm sure it doesn't oh. look like that when you're oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, uh, go. Oh, I hate the um, uh, the Bowflex machines. Uh, the like total gym. Total, total gym. So expensive. Have you seen the Juju yeah. Mufu and one that makes fun of that where he's like got tangled, tangled into resistance yeah. bands <laughs> doing like, like 225 uh, spider web. Like <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, the reality is, uh, for the cost of a two thousand dollar so flex, you can buy a barbell rack and full bumper plate set, and that will get you so much farther for your athletic goals than a Bowflex ever will. Or a one way ticket to Steamboat to break your legs in the mountain. Or a one way ticket to Steamboat to break your legs. Yep. All right, folks. That's, That's it. Listening. That's an exciting, action packed, thriller episode <laughs> of the Outrun Show. Yeah. Hey, FYI. Um, Outrun show is also on YouTube. So, hey oh, guys yeah. listening on YouTube, if you're watching, you get to see our pretty faces. And if you haven't watched us before, but you're just listening, um, do check out the YouTube video because there's links and the breakdown a little bit easier of what all our topics are. You also get to attach a face to the voice, which I like to do. Maybe you don't, um, but there will be all sorts of fun links. If there's anything relevant that we talk about, um, um, Instagram, yeah, we coaches, link out. all that stuff will all be li linked out on the YouTube channel. So. And and the other platforms we're on is Apple's podcast. That's a very easy podcast player. We're if on you use Apple, Apple, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube. You're not on whatever whatever Android does. So. Spotify. All right, folks. Good <laughs> call, Josh. We need to talk about that every time. Yeah, right. We do. All right. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Do the do the, thing. Do, the do the internet do the attention thing. thing. <laughs> Catch you next time. <laughs> Catch you next time.